Welcome to Like Mother, Like Murder. I am Rachel. And I'm Heather. We bring you the good, the badass, and the crime. This is Like Like Mother, Mother, Like like murder. Murder. Welcome back to Like Mother, Like Murder, a very special update episode. So um, I'm here today with Rachel, my amazing co-host, because we have got some updates for you guys about the Dan Markell and Wendy Adelson case that we talked about back in March. Was it March? It was March. It was March, March of this year, um, episode 39. Because Charlie Adelson, Wendy's brother, is finally on trial. Yes. So just a quick recap. Definitely go back and listen to episode 39, but just a quick recap, okay? Dan Markell, amazing father slash uh, professor at Flo- in F- at FSU, and he was literally gunned down in his home by hitmen. In and his driveway. Like, in it was his just driveway. Right of his house. Exactly. So sad. Um, after, literally just like after dropping his boys off in the morning, gone down at his home. Him and his wife um, had been recently divorced. They were actually both dating other people, but they were still in a pretty, hmm, not amicable uh, situation regarding the boys because Wendy, his ex-wife, really wanted to move um, down to um, southern Florida away from Tallahassee to be closer to her parents and to her family, okay? And he was gunned down. And after years, years, they finally find the two men responsible for the shooting. And through some Great investigation and a little bit of luck, honestly, on the part of um, the investigators. Um, They are able to then trace that back to a woman named uh, Catherine Magbanawa. And then they find that Catherine Magbanawa is the girlfriend of Charlie Adelson. Yep. Right? So the ex-brother-in-law of the man who was shot. Um, and so both shooters, Luis Rivera, um, and Sigfrido Garcia, who is Catherine Magbanawa's baby daddy. You guys really got to go back and listen. There's like so much detail in this case. Yeah, it is um, a lot. <laughs> and Catherine Magbanawa, all three have gone through trial back in like 2016, um, Maybe 20, 2019 might have been when Catherine Bag- Magbanawa had her second trial, but all three of them have gone through trial and been convicted on this crime. But Charlie Adelson has yet to be um, convicted, but he is now on trial. So quick updates. Um, during Magbanawa's trial, she did say that Charlie Adelson was involved and that he should be prosecuted. And um, they had several pieces of evidence that linked Charlie to the crimes, but it took a while, um, eight years after the murder of Dan Markell, before the grand jury would be able to indict him. Um, So he is charged with murder, conspiracy of murder, and solicitation of murder, and that's what he's on trial for. So um, the pre-trial, there was a little bit of drama pre-trial because uh, when the witness, witness list came out, his parents, so him and Wendy's parents, um, Donna and Harvey Adelson, they were on the witness list. Mm-hmm. And they actually basically were trying to get out of it. They were like, we're not going to talk. Like, we don't want to talk at all. And um, they were trying not to testify. And the judge ordered them and said, you have to come testify or you're going to be arrested. Which is like, so clearly there's a reason they don't want to testify, exactly. right? Exactly. They, they don't want to uh, put their hand and, and be under oath and have to go up there and either tell the truth or lie knowing that they're under oath. So there is a so reason what do they you don't want to be there. What do you think they said they would do if they got put on the stand? Plead the fifth. 
Yeah. I don't know why it took me so long. <laughs> that's exactly. That's exactly. Yeah. They basically said, if you put us on the stand, we're going to plead the fifth. So the the lawyers were just like, fine, we're not going to put you on the stand. They were taken off um, because they they said that they would just plead the fifth. But some other witnesses that are are um, on the list to testify, Wendy herself, mm-hmm. um, Katie McBanawa, Catherine McBanawa, and right. then both Sigfrido and uh, mm-hmm. Lewis. Rivera are gonna are on the list to testify and remember all three of them are currently in prison for this crime okay um and Charlie Adelson currently not on the witness list we know that that's normal um so he he won't but they they will be using a lot of the wiretaps that they had um in place uh during the investigation so they they did jury selection that started last week on the 23rd. And then the opening statement for the trials um, began last week, late last week on like the 26th. Um, and so prosecution, you know, they pointed to the fact that Charlie Adelson, there's a lot of evidence that he's like he's kind of the mastermind behind all of this. This all kind of stemmed from the Adelson family and not necessarily from Katie McBanawa. And then um, in the defense's opening statement, they also brought up, if you guys remember from the episode um, where Wendy Adelson, in her initial interview with police right after her ex-husband was murdered, said that her uh, her brother had made a joke right. that buying a TV for her was cheaper than hiring a hitman. And so they bring that up and they bring that up as a joke. And they're kind of leaning into the fact that Charlie Adelson is kind of like that kind of guy. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, he's he talks a lot and he's a joker and we're not going to dispute that. He did make this joke, but it was a joke. And then basically the defense's whole argument is that Magbanawa was the mastermind, that she facilitated all of this in order to blackmail Charlie. So Charlie and Katie Magbanawa, they were dating, they were together, and what the defense is saying is that when she found out that they were having issues with Dan Markell and... um when she found out that the Adelsons literally said, just pay him a million dollars so that you can take the kids. Katie kind of saw that as an opportunity. And she, she basically solicited from her baby daddy. And then Mm -hmm. he got his friend to help. They killed Dan Markell without Charlie knowing. And then after the deed was done, go back to Charlie and say, we did this. Now, give us money or we're going to say it's you. Right. Okay. Like they, their, their defense is that, um, like Charlie is basically being blackmailed, um, by, uh, by Katie. Um, so it's interesting, right? Whenever you watch lawyers and you guys can see like a lot of this trial on court TV, it is like all out there. Um, you see lawyers like on TV, but like you watch this lawyer, this defense lawyer, and he is just go do yourself a favor. Go watch some of the clips of the defense um, the defense's opening statement because it's a trip. It's a trip. Um, so what like one of the first witnesses they bring on. So literally the first day of trial last week, they brought on Wendy. Oh, really? And she yeah. And she basically said that. The right people were in jail for this crime already, talking about, you know, the three that have already been convicted. And she denied her family's involvement at all. And she found and she says that she found out that day, the day of the trial in the prosecutor's um, opening statement and the defense's opening statement that um, uh, that Charlie knew about who murdered her ex-husband earlier than she she thought. She she didn't know that supposedly, allegedly, according to the defense's thing, that Charlie found out the day after the murder or whenever because he was going to be blackmailed for it. Hmm. So the other thing that's interesting, you can watch her, um, you can watch them questioning her in court. 
Um, she is considered like a state's witness. She's on the witness list for the state, but you know, they're almost treating her like a, like it's almost like a cross examination because the prosecutor's hammering her. She's like hammering her and she's saying like, you know, this is not, you know, y- your family was involved. No, I didn't know my family was involved. Are you saying you didn't? Like, she's hammering her. And then she even talks about um, her book that, remember, like, Wendy had wrote a book, supposedly a fiction book, about no, a woman who remember. had to move. And so Wendy had supposedly I don't remember wrote, that at all. Yeah. So she had wrote a book about a woman who had to move to – florida because her husband got a job and how unhappy she was there and how like all this stuff yeah so they asked her about it and they're basically like is this supposed to be you and she's like no it's not supposed to be me but it's like like, that just really made me straight up think of uh cory richens in that situation that's why i was oh yeah it's It's like no Mm -hmm. i don't remember a book you know so one of the things i want to add right now it's kind of like a question and kind of a statement i guess But this makes me think, so obviously in her head, if he gets convicted, if Charlie gets convicted, she's next, right? Because there's no way that she, that he's going to be involved and then she's not going to be tied into it, right? So she's going to do everything on her part to try to have him not be convicted, even if for some reason, you know, she knows. It's just one of those things where she's trying to keep herself clean and it's not going to happen. So You are 100, 100% correct. Right. 100% correct. Because basically being the state's witness, she's offered um, almost like a deal that says anything that she says on the stand is quote unquote like it's immunity. However, yeah. that just her, it just applies to her testimony. So if they find any other evidence after the fact – or anything from anybody else's testimony during this trial, they can still use that against her. Right. It's just nothing she says can be used. But like you said, she's not saying anything. She's not blaming, like she's not putting anything on her brother right. because I agree with you. The next step, oh, they're definitely going to look to her and for sure to the parents as well because um, Donna, the mother, is brought up a lot. She's a common theme. because because she wanted her grandkids to be closer to her, and she was going to do anything within her power, financially, all of it, to get them to be there. One, and I will tell you about some of the really mm, interesting, I guess I'll say, text messages oh that come out in this, um, in, um, during the, the initial days of this trial that really, that really are pointing to what you're saying and about Wendy and Donna. So the other thing, you know, about Donna is, um, you know, part of the prosecution's, uh, uh, evidence too is that Donna had written, like almost I think it was like up to 17k worth of checks to Katie so you know it's like I mean Donna's definitely involved somehow um so then Wendy Adelson she took the stand then they get Katie Magbanawa um to come and take the stand and at this point right Katie is already convicted she's convicted um for life without parole her you know that that trial has happened um but now She's kind of changing her story. Um, and she is a state's witness. So when the defense um, comes up and starts to question her, they're like, and it's kind of a dick move. But like, I guess, you know, from the side of the defense, you're you're trying to make her squirm because at this point, you know, she's now saying that like, no, this was all because before she She's she keeps changing her story. And so this is what the defense said. He literally is asking this woman and I'm not I'm not saying she's a good person. She what really sucks is her and Sigfrido um, Garcia. I think they have two kids and now they're both in jail. So I don't know. You know, like, I feel really bad for her kids. Um, But she's definitely involved in this. Like she knew what was going on, whether or not she was the one who planned it. She was a willing participant in this. Um, But basically the attorney, he, he turns to her and he says, there are only two ways that you get out of prison in a coffin or by turning in Charlie Adelson. So what are you doing? And, and I was like, Oh my God, that's like really rough. Like it's crazy. I mean, so 
Yeah, they are going to say whatever they need to say. Some people take things too far, but no, she's not getting out of prison. She went to prison for life with no parole. So, yeah. I mean, yeah. the likeliness of that anyways, I would just laugh in his face if I were her, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, they, so he's basically trying to say, like, we can offer you, you something. Well, he's saying that you made a deal with the prosecution that if you turn in Charlie Adelson um, at this trial, that you'll get um, you'll get some kind of deal. But she doesn't have a deal. She's right. already been convicted. Her right. deal passed. Right. They gave her a deal. Like the first, like the very first trial she had, she didn't take it. She was kind of riot or die at that point. And now during this trial, she's basically saying, I want the truth to come out. And the truth is that like Charlie was involved in this. Okay. And then so, um, so she does have an appeal pending um, for her uh, case. I don't know about that appeal. My only thought is that maybe the sentencing will be lighter, but she's still a willing participant in a conspiracy to commit murder right. and for solicitation of murder. And because Dan Markell was murdered and she was part of like the crime, she's convicted of that murder too. So maybe she'll get Life with the possibility of parole, I don't really see a big a difference in that. But so then, so remember, I was telling you about these text messages. Okay. So they have a bunch of texts between like everyone, mostly like the Adelsons. But if you guys remember um, from the original episode, when they actually um, shot and killed Dan Markell, that was the second time that they had been up to Tallahassee. They had mm -hmm. gone up um, like about a month prior and they kind of, they, they scratched the plan. They kind of like got cold feet. They didn't want to do it with his kids around. He had his kids and stuff like that. And they scratched the plan. And then right after that June trip where they decided, okay, we're not going to kill him this time. There is a text from Donna to Charlie right after this saying, quote, I know you'll come through. Hmm. And that, I mean, okay, yes, mm. circumstantial at best, but th I mean, like, if I was a jury, I I'd be like, oh, what are you, then if you're not talking about this, what are you talking about? Like, let me know what that text was about. She like, that's him so to bring sketchy. Her some, uh, some groceries. I know. I know. I know you'll come through on my <laughs> on those uh, special apples I need from the store, right? That no delivery. I know. And then um, this one is really interesting. So there is a text from Wendy to her ex husband Dan Markell, and she and they, from what I kind of understood is that they know that when Wendy sent this text, it was when she was down with her family. Like, mm -hmm. so they know she was around Charlie at the time. And the text is asking Dan, are you in Tallahassee from this date to this date? And she, and the way that the text is coming off, it's like, oh, um, do you, uh, cause I, I'm hoping I can pick up the kids on so-and-so date. But the dates that she's asking, are you in Tallahassee from this date to this date, that's include the happened. date of the murder. Mm -hmm. Oh. Mm hmm Yeah. So that's a little sketch mm -hmm. as well. But again, I mean, any co-parenting relationship, you're probably constantly, oh, yeah. you know, going back and forth on dates when, when you're trying to plan things out. So, Absolutely. But it is sketchy that she's asking him specifically about these dates, and that's the dates of the murder. Okay, and then they have a bunch of text messages between Catherine McBanalaw and Charlie Adelson um, that are all lovey dovey, love you too. Oh, you're you're the best. I know how to make you smile. All this stuff. When supposedly she's blackmailing him, like the whole the defense's whole thing is that Charlie is being blackmailed and he's being and his life is being threatened. That if if he doesn't pay up, they're going to come after him. Like they oh, you're going to do Dan. that to someone that you love so much and that exactly. you're, you're being very romantic, and, romantic, and sentimental, and all of that. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We don't think so. I don't think so. We don't yeah. Think so. so yeah. 
Um, so that has been all of the testimony literally up until last night. So you guys, we're recording this like on Halloween. We're going to release this tomorrow. There'll have been one more day of testimony, um, which I will be watching tonight. I promise. (laughs) Um, and, and we will keep you guys updated on this trial, but they really, the prosecution really came out strong with their, um, with their witness list. They're really like they are not slow rolling this they are getting they are getting right into the nitty gritty and i'm really interested to see i mean we mentioned it on the last episode um on the original episode like i think it's insanely crazy that the three um people that are actually charged um and convicted of these crimes are all low income minority you know, not the right. rich white doctor, pretty much, right? The one and who so, probably uh, found those people to do it for exactly. him, and was exactly. the mastermind behind it. Yeah. So it will just be really interesting to see what else comes out in this trial. And I am, I am holding my breath to see um, what happens. Not only with Charlie, because it really does worry me. We've seen it many times before that the white guy is going to get off um, because he has good lawyers and he has a bunch of money behind him but i'm also interested to see after this trial like you kind of said are they then going to go after wendy and the parents um we will see we will see um one other really that's happening i hope it does because i think for sure there's knowledge at the very least and if she's not doing anything especially on wendy's part look I get how unhappy maybe you are in the situation or whatever that you want to be closer to your family and the kids and stuff like that. But you're literally taking away their father who was a good father. Right. He was a good dad. And because of your selfishness, you took away their dad, which is which is crazy. If 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 you knew about it, allegedly, if you knew about it, the last thing I want to kind of end on um, is kind of sad. Um, so uh, Dan Markell's parents you know, have been involved in this, um, since, since the beginning. And, uh, they have, they tried their hardest to stay involved in the kids' lives. And, you know, the Adelsons made that a little more difficult than it needed to be. Um, but Dan's, uh, Dan McCarroll's mom is at the trial. Um, she is watching everything, but, oh, I'm getting goosebumps. Whenever, um, Whenever they're talking about, uh, like, when they're talking about the autopsy, when they're showing, like, pictures of the crime scene, she does step out because she said Good. she said she doesn't want that image in her head. Yeah. And she kind of, you know, she wants to um, maintain the, you know, the happy images of her son. Right. Um, so that part um, is really rough, but all the power to uh, Dan Markell's parents and, and um, just hoping that it, it will get to a place where justice is found for their son and where I know what they're really hoping for, right, is that they have, that they can eventually see and spend time with their grandkids because yeah. at this point, that's what they have left of their son is them. And uh, the Adelsons are not making that easy, right? So... Yeah, so with that being said, um, next week, you guys, for our regularly scheduled Like Mother, Like Murder episode, we have a little treat for you. We did a Patreon episode related to this um, crime. It is called The Prod Father. Um, We had it on our Patreon, but we are going to release it on our regular platform for you guys all to listen to because um, one of the early theories of Dan Markell's um, murder before they linked it to um, this whole (laughs) scheme. Yeah, before it became all of this. (laughs) There was what we're releasing next week. Yes. There was a theory that it had to do with the fact that Dan Markell, he was a lawyer, that he was involved in a case related to the prod father, which is an insane case. I don't want to give you guys any extra details because I really want you guys to just be completely shocked of all of everything that comes out because you guys this that it's it's an insane case. Um 
So we're going to release that um, on Tuesday uh, for our regular scheduled episode. Um, but before you listen to that one on Tuesday, make sure you go back and listen to Dan Markell's case. Make sure you're caught up on the updates here. And it will just be like another piece of that, a piece of that story. So there you have it. Updates. Dan Markell, Charlie Adelson on trial. And we will we'll keep you updated. Yeah, go back and listen to episode 39. That's the episode. And then stay tuned for The Parade Father. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that episode. That's crazy. It's right, a crazy we one. We'll talk to you guys next week. Okay, love you. Bye. Okay, love you. Bye.